Okay, I split this into one more section, the reviewing of the factoring, and I left the most difficult of all the factoring methods. It's the difference or sum or difference of cubes. So we're going to look at cube roots. We'll have a binomial that has a cube root. And people think the pattern should be something very simple, but it's not. And so let me talk you through by looking at one of these. Now, we saw before that we would have something like this, where we said, okay, I see square roots on the front and the back. So I'm going to write those square roots twice. Now, it's a negative in the middle, and there's, there's, so there's no middle, uh, no middle term, so it was opposite sides. So I checked for square roots on the front and the back. Well, what if we checked for cube roots? So I have cube roots here. What is the cube root of yeah, 8? Okay, I didn't know that, 5, 12. I have cube roots here, okay? So I'm going to write what those cube roots are. And I'm going to call them A and B because it's going to fit a pattern here. So I have cube roots, so I have to factor the, the sum or difference. This is the sum of cube roots. Now, this is unfortunately the only way to do it. You have to memorize this. There's no other way. I wish there was. And so this is the least remembered one. But if you're really a strong math student or planning on going on a calculus, you really should have this one down. It does come up quite a bit. So if I were factoring this, I'm going to again write down my cube root of the front is my A. The cube root of the back is going to be B. Now this pattern I have memorized. And I'm going to make the A, I'm going to fill everything in here to this pattern. So what I mean is A was X, B was A. So A squared would be X squared. A, B is A times B. I'm going to write it as 8X. doesn't matter the way you write that. 8 squared. So B squared, 64. Okay, now what about the signs here? Well, you can memorize two versions of this formula, or you can just remember this. It's called SOAP. It means same, opposite, always positive. So what does that mean? Okay, well, same means it's the same as what you started with. Our first sign is going to be a positive because what we started with is, was a positive. So same, then it's opposite, then it's always positive. Okay. Uh, what is the cube root of 216? That's the hard thing. Hold on. You know what? I don't know it, so I'm going to do it. I think I should know it, but I don't. So I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to break this down into its pieces. Okay, I don't know if I did this in our review for your class or not, but so 216 is made up of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, so if I'm looking for a cube root, it takes 3 of the same number to make a cube root. So 2 times 3, 6 is the cube root of 216, which I probably should have known, but I don't. Okay, so here's my point. <laughs> it is really unfortunate. I'm going to rewrite this because that is really unfortunate that they did that. Oops. Okay, I didn't want them to use A and B because our pattern has the A and B and that would get very confusing. So A is going to be the cube root of the front. So the cube root of the front is 6x. The cube root of the back is going to be y. All right, now here's our pattern again. A, B a squared, a, b, b squared. Now I'm going to fill this in here. So 6x and y. Now a squared is not just the x, it's all of this squared. It's 6x, so it's 36x squared. a, b is the two times each other, so that'd be 6xy. And b squared would be this whole group, but in this case it's y squared. Now let's do the soap trick. Soap. Same as what we started with, opposite, always positive. All right, 
Now you could have memorized a totally different, um, the other version of it for the for a subtraction problem for a difference of cubes, but if it, it doesn't change, if you do SOAP, you don't have to. So here's what I mean. I've got a cube root on the front, 2x. On the back, I've got a cube root, it's 5. So let's do our pattern again. Okay, so A is the first entire term, so it's 2x, b is the 5. a squared is 4x squared. a, b, we're going to multiply them together, I'd have 10x. b is 25. Now, same as what we started with. So, soap says same, opposite, always positive. Okay. Pause if you want to try on your own. I recognize a cube root on the front would be 10x. A cube root on the back, I know that's a little weird, but a cube root of, of 1 is 1. Now, I'm not going to write out the pattern again, but it would be a, b, a squared, a times b, it's just in this case 10x, and b squared would be 1. Okay, same opposite, always positive. All right, we have one final section here. I was a little surprised when I looked ahead and saw this was in here. Uh, this is a little difficult. I would almost call this an Algebra 2 idea, but, but it'll work. Um, do you remember that fractional exponents are roots? So if I had x to the 1 third, that means the cube root of x. That's what these fractional exponents are. And so x to the 2 thirds, for instance, it's the cube root of x and then all of that squared, like a normal exponent. Now that's a real quick reminder, so hopefully you remember that. Now, if I'm trying to, you see that there's, I could pull out a greatest common factor here, but it's very strange because I have x plus 2, those appear to be, those are the same, but the exponents are fractional exponents. So what would I do? Well, what I would do is take the lowest exponent out. Okay, so I'm going to take out the x plus 2 to the negative 1 third. Okay, so now if I took that, obviously that first one, it leaves nothing behind but 3x. On the back, it leaves the 4, but what does it do to this? Well, let me show you. x plus 2 to the 2 thirds, what we're doing, if we're taking out that lowest exponent, aren't we dividing it? That's really what we're doing. We're dividing it out. So I'm dividing out x plus 2 to the negative 1 third. Now look what would happen. So there's a lot of stuff you got to remember here, but if I was doing this, would, can't I subtract the exponents? Isn't this x to the third minus 2 or x? Well, I'm going to subtract these exponents. So this must be x plus 2 to the 2 thirds minus but it's a negative one-third. I know this is very strange, but do you follow the logic here? This is going to turn this into addition, and now I'm going to have x plus 2 to the, so two-thirds now plus one-third is three-thirds, and that's just one. So by taking out the negative one-third, I can pull it out front. I took the smaller one. But isn't that really just division? If I'm dividing it out of the second term, which allows me to subtract my exponents, which turns it into 3 over 3, or 1. Yeah, that's a weird way. Let me see how they finished it. Did they distribute that? Yeah, they went ahead to distribute that. So, okay. So, so far, this is what we've got. But there's some cleaning up that I could do in here, and I would get 3x plus 4x plus 8. Do you see I'm just cleaning, distributing that? So I could also, I've got a little more cleaning up I could do in there. That's 7x plus 8. Okay, difficult trick. I know this is unusual, but I'm taking out a GCF of 5a minus 1 to the negative 1 fourth. Now, it's easy to see what it would leave. It leaves the 2. Well, we started right away with this. So I'm dividing 
3 fourths. I'm dividing out that negative 1 fourth I took. So I took the negative 1 fourth because it's the smaller exponent. Now, do you see what's going to happen here? I'm going to subtract these. It's going to be 3 fourths minus 1 fourth. It's going to turn it into 4 over 4. So the same thing happened in this one. It's going to leave behind just 5a minus 1. Now, so again, I, I don't want to talk all through that again. Watch the last one, and, and if you didn't fully understand what, why this is, but I'm dividing out the 5a minus 1 to the negative 1 fourth. That's what all of this is about. Subtract the exponents, and it's going to lead to an exponent of 1. I said I wasn't going to talk through it again, and I pretty much did. Okay, so on the back end, I would leave just a 7a because I stole all this. I, I pulled it out as a GCF. Okay, now I have this. And the only thing left to do is tidy up what's inside of there. So 5a minus 1 to the negative 1 fourth. This is 10a minus 2 because I'm distributing. Seventeen a minus 2. All right, that's a crazy trick, and I'm a little surprised it's in there. I, I don't use that a lot. I, I think that, again, could be kind of an Algebra 2 concept in and of itself. Um, but there you go. So hopefully that made sense. So we did the uh, difference and the sum and difference of cubes, and we took a look at that. What would you do if you try to factor out a GCF with a negative exponent? Negative fractional exponent, for that matter.